help you not waste your money buying the wrong weapon light. Watch this video with me describing the five most common weapon light purchase mistakes. So here it works. We design and build precision fit holsters for pistols with lights and that means that every year many thousands of people come to us and we help them carry their pistol and light combination and we get to see a lot of the most common mistakes they make. In addition, we independently test and verify these lights for a number of metrics including lumens and candela and we can also help guide you through which weapon lights perform the best. So I thought it would be great for us to put together a video that describes the most common weapon light mistakes. Number one is buying a light that doesn't actually fit your pistol. So you might think a rail is a rail on a pistol, but that is not the case. You've got the standard 1913 Picatinny style rails. You've got the Glock style rails, which are similar, but require different keys. You've got proprietary rails, such as Sig Sauer put on their P365. Finally, Glock has their own Glock 43X MOS. That's got a smaller rail than standard. And believe me, not every light fits every one of these pistols. So if you've got a P365, go make sure that you get the regular P365 light. Side note, the X Macro and the X Macro Tac Ops use a standard Picatinny rail, so those actually you can get a regular standard rail for. Then most of the rest of the pistols out there that use a standard Picatinny rail can use just about any regular rail mount solution from a variety of manufacturers out there. Now, of course, the second piece of this is the length of the light and whether the rail will actually fit in the slot, which is really important on these smaller pistols. Something like this Steyr C9, you're going to have a hard time getting a large pistol light to fit on and you may not get the desired results. These keys are critically important and you have to leave them in there because if you don't, what's going to happen is you may get that to clamp on and it may even come out of the holster okay, but you go shoot it a few times and that's just going to eject itself off the end of the pistol. So the lesson here is know exactly what pistol you have and go to the manufacturer's website and make sure they support your exact pistol with the light you're looking for. Problem number two, and we hear this all the time, is I can't find a holster for my wacky pistol with my wacky light that nobody else has. Well, part of the reason why nobody makes a holster for it is because nobody else has your exact combination or there's five of you in the US and holster makers like us don't have the time to support just five of you with precision fit holsters with precision cut molds and precision tool paths for all of our CNC work here. So I recommend once you've got that perfect pistol and that perfect light that you're about to buy, again, you haven't bought the light yet, go make sure somebody is making a holster for you that you think is gonna work. And this is a perfect time for me to talk about rail adapters. So when you do the rail adapter solution, there's two big problems. First is, see how my hand fits on this light and is able to activate with my reaction hand the switches just as the manufacturer intended? Well, let's take a look at how it works on this adapted one. My thumb is here. Now I actually have to break my grip and bring my hand down, to press down on that light. In addition, if I get my full grip, I can actually roll my hand forward and activate that light in ways that I don't expect. Now the second problem is with the X Macro, I have this TLR7 sub and look, you can find holsters for it and these holsters fit good. With the rail adapter, I've got a TLR7 sub on a regular P365 and it doesn't fit. <laughs> so what are you left to do? Well, I guess you're gonna go potentially go buy a custom holster somewhere. Typically, those holsters are not going to have the level of quality that you're looking for. Now, one other thing about this problem is don't expect that a light that looks very similar fits exactly the same. It doesn't. Almost every manufacturer has features in the light that while they look similar, you mount them up on a pistol and you put them in a precision fit holster and they're not gonna work. So I just took my TLR7 sub off and I put this other manufacturer's light that looks like a TLR7. Let's see if it'll fit in the holster. 
Do you want me to keep pounding? Now, do you want to get this out in a emergency scenario? Oh, I don't think you do. The lesson is find your light and your holster before you buy the light. Number three, switches. There are a few major styles of switches. The rotation switch, where both of these switches move in one direction or another during activation. This has been around for quite a while, and it's a staple because it works very well. I can go ahead and roll my hand as I draw, roll my hand up, and activate constant activation. Or when I draw, if I want to do momentary, I can hit it and then let off, and that's momentary. And it doesn't matter how quickly I touch it, it goes ahead and turns off as soon as I let off. This is one of my favorite styles of switches. Next up are the switches such as you find on the TLR7A and the TLR7 subs. These can be mounted either in high or low positions, and these are a gate activated switch. It operates the same on either side, and these also work very well. It takes very little training to get used to using these switches. I still prefer the rotation style switches, but these are a close second. Next up is the press inward style paddle switches such as you would find on this Enforce light. And these activate very similarly. Now, the one beef I have with these is it's not very natural for me to draw and then hit that either by rolling my hand on it, it really doesn't work, or hitting my thumb on it for a, for a constant activation nor is it very intuitive for me if I want to stay on it during live fire and then let off. It doesn't work nearly as well for me. It also disrupts the sights by pushing the sights to the side. The advantage of a downward style press is that your, the force of your frame really is doing a good job keeping that pistol from nose diving too much. And finally, there's a version that uses a switch on the grip and that when you grab that pistol and build your good grip, that light is turning on. That can be good for shooters that know that every time they grab that pistol with a good strong grip that they want that light on. It tends to be a little problematic if they want the light off because a lot of times, even on drawing, you're building that grip and you're gonna activate that light. Now, no matter which activation system you use, please do yourself a favor and train with it. It's important to know what scenarios you're going to turn on a constant or momentary, and it's important for you to be able to do that in a fairly reliable manner because when stuff happens, you're not gonna have a whole lot of time to think about this. You're gonna to default to your training, and if your training is, hey, I am always just drawing with it, and I don't even normally have a light on my pistol, well, you're probably gonna to forget to activate, and now here you are staring down at someone, and you may not be able to see what it is they're doing or who they are, or whether they have a weapon in their hand. So get your training. Number four has to do with batteries or charging systems. Now there's a few different methods of managing batteries in a weapon light. This TLR1HL, you actually have to take the light off, open up the battery door, pull the batteries out and put in fresh batteries. It's not a big deal, but it does take a couple of minutes. If you are in a fast paced class and you wanna always get fresh batteries, you may want to do something like run one that where the batteries come out the front, like on this TLR7 sub. You can rotate that bezel, drop that battery out quickly, put in a fresh one, and get that up and going. Now, of course, you may be running a rechargeable battery, in which case you can keep one on the charger and one in your light, and then go ahead and swap them back and forth. Now, for me personally, I don't mind prime batteries. I get the Panasonics in bulk, and they cost me about a buck a piece. I just happen to have a lot on hand. If I'm gonna be running a class, I just bring a bunch. Having a prime battery is actually pretty good because they tend to last a little bit longer than your rechargeables. Now, some people love the rechargeable capability of a light such as an Olight. Those have batteries that are integrated. You can't remove them, and they use a charger that comes in from the outside. There's a number of manufacturers that do this type of solution. It's very convenient, including for topping off your batteries at night. However, if you're gonna be running a class, now you've got an integrated battery with a light that's only gonna last a certain amount of time. For me, I prefer a battery that I can change out. I like CR123A, even better is a light that can take rechargeable batteries or CR123As. 
And my last point has to do with how well a light performs. This is kind of funny from us because we spend so much time geeking out on light lumens and candela and CRI and color temperature and switches and batteries and all the stuff. But really, once you get a good reputable manufacturer's light that fits on your pistol, that switches work for you, that you can find a holster for, you're probably gonna be in the realm of having a pretty good light. But if you really wanna optimize your carry, I would invite you to check out lowlightdefense.com or our channel and see all the data we've got about how well any particular light performs within a market segment. I really hope this video helps you choose the best light for your needs. We at Works have a number of favorites, but this favorites list is always evolving. So I invite you to follow our channel and see what lights are our favorites on any particular day we do go ahead and post new reviews on a regular basis. In addition, if you're looking for a precision holster for your pistol and light, that is something that we design here at Works. I invite you to go to works.com, go to our homepage, check out our holster finder, enter your pistol and light, and see if we've got a holster that fits your needs. Thank you so much for watching. This is Shan from Works. Have a blessed day.